Hello, I'm Pam Hoffman, Everyday Spacer. I'm Jeff Miller, 2049 Outfitters. At Everyday Spacer, we show regular folks how to personally and directly participate in space exploration, science, and astronomy. We're here on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, 12 midnight Eastern Time, and 3 p.m. on Saturday in Queensland, Australia. We're broadcasting live from Thousand Oaks, California. It's Friday the 13th. Is that a thing anywhere else in the world? We have some news. The Weekly Space Hangout ended their season for good last Wednesday. That's, And that's been on our mind um, every time we um, talk about mentioning that the show will be wrapping up because we've thought about that a few times something happens i mean i visited the space symposium and ended up with a whole bunch of really interesting guests so that um that put that off um, we just keep going we just keep going and going yeah yeah we have some we have lost some other good space related shows over the years space matters isn't airing anymore and now the weekly space hangout is gone we recently got a pledge of five dollars per month though so maybe what we can do is set up a subscription and stripe for that and, and other people it, it would help to encourage us to continue actually and we've got hey, oh, scott. hey scott yeah yes it was yep. <laughs> yes it was and we've got lord of the equator hello welcome whoever you are welcome <laughs> yeah and scott you know we would not just end the show we would say, hey, we're you know, thinking about wrapping it up. We're looking at such and such a time frame and give everybody a chance to kind of, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, that was, uh, I actually got a day's notice because I'm one of the, uh, I was one of the journalists. Um, so I kind of knew a little bit in advance, but it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And we've already got three shows lined up. So it's not happening. Yeah. It's not happening no. this month. No, not even. No. Um, so anyway, yeah, you were. I say about yeah. Patreon. Yeah, we've been thinking of of basically figuring out Patreon and getting something going there. Um, and I know a number of people who use it. Hey, Janie. Hey, Janie. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And hey, Cliff. Hi, Cliff. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, everyone. We really appreciate that. Def yeah. That definitely encourages us too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and oh hello yes, you maybe stay palm nice <laughs> yeah that's cute yeah. yeah patreon has a bit of a learning curve and they take fees so right. um you know if any of you guys know anything about patreon or another platform could offer us tips tricks or guidance be most appreciated yeah getting some help would be just amazing or maybe you know somebody who could sponsor the show um we kind of want to know can you pledge uh, a little bit a dollar or more that would be us dollars um a month like i said we have someone who's already talked about five a month and do you know anyone else who would like to help that kind of thing write to us if you have any ideas i put something together here in the subject line uh show pledge uh, go ahead and send that to me, Pam, at everydayspacer.com. And if you would like to pledge something, give us the amount. And if you can cover the fee or not, I think in Stripe I can set it up so it will cover the fee uh, for us. Um, so, yeah, or if you have any ideas, that would be awesome. Yeah. Send us an email if you think you can help. Okay. Also, um, Scott. Oops. Oops, sorry. Let's, let's that was show you. Scott. Um, um, Oh, okay. So Scott's already. So, okay. Yeah, you see, that's why I was talking Patreon because a lot of people already know it. Got it. Okay. Um, and then Alan. Hey, hey Alan. Alan. Hey, glad you could be here. And Don's here. Hi, Don. Oh, hi, Don. And Daniel. So I'll leave that on the bottom. Maybe oh, you can it should up. show up. Yeah, there it is. From sh shows that retire. We actually have picked up some from Weekly Space Hangout. Yeah, I was uh, available in the chat Wednesday night when they were running the show. And someone says, oh, what, what will we go watch now? And I'm like, well, you could come and see our show. And then someone asked, well, what is your show? And I said, well, is it okay if I post the information? And Nancy said, absolutely. So that was really nice. And I think we got about five, no, five, subscribers. five, five or six 
subscribers, yeah. probably from the Weekly Space Hangout. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, hey, Tex. Hi, Tex. Welcome. And Don says, um, so, oh, so, coffee. That's what it is. Buy me a coffee. Yeah. Someone was telling me about that yesterday, and she didn't know how it was. She couldn't remember how it was spelled. So yeah, and, yeah, and great I, idea. I know less about that than I do Patreon, yeah. but you know, I do know people who use that as well. Yeah, and it's possible it could be simpler. Who knows? We don't. Yeah. We don't really. I know someone who I know at least one person who uses both. Oh, um, they're okay. An, they're an author, and mm -hmm. they use both. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Scott mm -hmm. says, "Good point, Daniel." Yep. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Yep. And donor box. Okay. We'll look into oh, that as one as well. Okay. That's something else. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Really appreciate that. Yep. And yep. more news. Um, there might be a comet in the sky. Um, Cliff Watson posted something to Facebook, and we'll share the link. And see, I'm going to you show it? you what, yeah, show you what he posted. This um, article from Fox News, um, bright green comet may become visible to the naked eye later this month. So that'd be really cool. Oh, that'd be wonderful. I've been hoping for a decent comet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been waiting for a comet that they say will be visible that actually is yes. visible. Yes. So. Well, we went and saw the one, um, but it wasn't that spectacular. Well, it was spectacular, but it's like, yeah. wouldn't it be cool to see a really, really yeah. great comet? Yeah. JPL says that the comet has an orbital period of about five or 50,000 years, which means that we're not going to see this one again soon. No. And um, so nearest the Earth, um, February 1st. So end of the month, um, beginning of February. So we'll keep that around and talk about it a little bit more. I did yeah. put a link into the chat. It should be a clickable link. Mm -hmm. So that's all right. Just so you know, yeah. uh, it's actually really nice to be here in my, in my own computer. I really appreciate all the people who hosted me in Ohio, including Dawn, who's in the audience tonight. I uh, really enjoyed that chat with Dawn last week and she'll be back soon. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so tonight's topic is fishing for jellyfish galaxies. We'll be back in 8.3 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's great to know when that ends too. <laughs> Big delay. All right. So fishing for jellyfish galaxies is another Zooniverse citizen science project. Jeff takes the lead on this demo and it, uh, you, you go and help astronomers identify and classify potential elusive jellyfish galaxies in large sky surveys. All right, Jeff, take it away. Okay. Um, yeah, let me get the correct oh, one up. Sorry. There we go. I jumped the gun. There we go. Um, Okay, another Zooniverse project, guys. Um, and this one just recently popped up, so it made finding a topic for today easy. Um, because the, this is now officially the last one. But if this looks familiar to you, Jellyfish Galaxies, we did talk about a similar um, project looking for Jellyfish Galaxies, but it was not this project. We talked about it um, July 9th um in um 21 right 2021 nope that's actually the globe at night thing for oh. later oh never mind but <laughs> in any case we we did talk about it a long time ago and it was a different project um and a jellyfish galaxy is a galaxy that um basically is entering the <laughs> It's entering the the gas um, bubble of a galaxy cluster, so it's um, you know so it's basically impacting that gal that gas bubble, and that's what. He's using his hands again. <laughs> you can't see, so I'm sharing. Okay, but so when a galaxy enters the gas bubble, it strips the gas off of off of the galaxy and you see the tail of it. And apparently they, someone thought that they looked like jellyfish. What well, and, and it was, uh, what I got out of it was they're moving at like Ram speeds, like 
like yeah. amazingly fast and then they have tails and all kind yeah. of weird stuff yeah because apparently ga galaxies that aren't part of that cluster that are near that are close enough are captured by the gravity of the cluster mm. kind of like um you know stars are are captured by or you know objects are captured by a solar system mm. okay it's just a gravitational pull yeah it's a gravitational pull and okay the thing is is that they're coming in and they're they're coming in hot enough you know they stream they scream through it and are stripped of their um gases mm. which to me sounds like it's basically bad for that galaxy because <laughs> there's going to be less star forming in that galaxy yeah there's a couple things that happen with that i guess um, mm -hmm. but um a lot of those galaxies are slowed down by that and become part of that cluster Mm, okay. Um, oh, he's going back. Yep. <laughs> so, um, you know, typical th three images. Um, now, this is at 90%. Now, earlier this weekend, it was at 90%. Then yesterday, it was at 98%. You mean 88 Or 88%. Yeah. yeah. 88%. So, they added some material. So, they've been adding material. Yeah. Very popular, though. Lots of people working on it. Yep. And um, so... And <laughs> so, yeah, so they talk about um, how the galaxies um, impact that, and they'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but apparently, again, human eyes are better at finding yep. the, the shape differences. Well, and pattern recognition kind of things. And, yep. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah so... Um, Let's go to the about, because they always have some good info here um, about the project. What are jellyfish galaxies? Again, the um, the pull of the galaxy not only holds the or the pull of gravity not only holds the galaxy cluster together, but can also draw other galaxies um, in. And um, the drag force is called the ram, ram pressure stripping. Oh, okay. I didn't read this very much. Yeah. This. I tried the project itself. It's it's actually pretty yeah. pretty neat. So yeah, took it th to this that is an illustration of of what actually happens. Is the galaxy comes mm -hmm. in and it hits the um, basically gas of the cluster, and their own gas is stripped away, and they leave a trail. And um, these are all examples of of. Um, galaxies that aren't uniform. Basically, the typical thing is the galaxy itself is not uniform. The cleft rise, very strange shaped galaxies indeed. Yep. And, um, yeah, and I never really heard it. Well, we talked about it before, yeah. but I didn't really know about this aspect of it. So Yeah, I'd never heard of, of this sort of thing before either. But interesting thing is that this, these images are coming from the dark energy camera mounted on the Cerro Tololo Observatory in Chile. Oh, cool. So what it, what it means is that um, it's a um, dark energy camera. So this is a project taking images looking for dark energy by surveying galaxies, and they're reusing those images to look for something else. I, I like that. Yep. I like getting... You know, double the bang for your buck. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, and um, already done. Yeah. So, th this is the reference to um, the cosmic cosmological jellyfish zooniverse project. This is the one that we covered. One, right? yeah. yeah. And I'll show it to you here. And this should look a little bit familiar to some of you. Um, and these are. Um, pretty, these are not um, visible light images. And so that's the difference for what they're doing here is that these are visible light images. Ah, okay. And again, their team, not so much pictures here, um, like most of them. And the only picture that they have is this, which doesn't look like any of the members, I suspect. <laughs> um, but it's... Um, a lot, a lot of these people are part of GASP, which is gas stripping phenomena. 
and galaxies. Mm. Um, so they're they're looking at a whole bunch of different. This group looks at a whole bunch of different things that strip gases from galaxies, and this is just one aspect of it. Nice. And they have a another web page here. One of the things that I like about Zooniverse is that it sends you off to a whole bunch of if you're interested in the topic oh yeah you can, you can always find more <laughs> and travel down that rabbit yep. hole for yep. quite some time <laughs> and this is the faq um what features am i looking for um and we'll go into that in the tutorial the tutorial does a pretty good job of describing it field guides not so great in this one but you know it does answer some questions but the tutorial is really good yeah i actually tried a few and it, yeah. was, it yep. was really cool so how many ga galaxies should I classify? I mean, y'all know as many as you want. Um, All right. But if I can't see a galaxy, galaxy is too small, or there's a problem with the image. Um, now here's an, another thing that can cause it to look distorted is that if it's in the process of a merger. So mm -hmm. if you see a nearby galaxy of the same size, you mark it as a potential merger. Cool. Um, because they'll only be nearly the same size if they're actually close to each other. Because mm. even if one's in front of the other, if they're far away, one's going to be much bigger than the other. That's true. So, hmm. so um, you know, there could also be stars in the foreground. You can ignore those. Right. Um, or if the galaxy's edge on. If even if it's edge on, you'll sometimes see a trail. Now it's not necessarily coming out one end or the other of the edge on. Um, they say that there could be trails coming out this way from a galaxy if it's hitting, you know, disc, disc word in, however you say that. Um, and they also say you can always hit, ask a question and talk and discuss it with other classifiers. Um, I've never had a lot of good luck with that but hey, oh your your mileage may vary yeah it probably depends on if anybody's actually in there at the right, time yeah so we go into the classify and um and here's the um here's what we're looking for clumps coming off tails and you know basically if you see a tail this way the direction of motion is that way um and they talk about, um, and they're actually really rare. Yeah. But they've got enough images that. Yeah. A I, large enough sky survey, you'll get all kinds of things. And it's not like we have to wade through every single image. I suspect that they had a computer already filter out what could possibly be one. Mm -hmm. And so um, classifying a galaxy. Um, you, a bunch of there's a bunch of steps to it but they're all they're all pretty you know pick one of two or one of three things right. each step so they're fairly simple steps there's just a bunch of them yeah i, I thought it was a very good flow and i got yeah. to see a lot of different aspects mm -hmm. of these images so yeah so um and if you need some help you you ask someone um but you know so the first classification is is it disturbed or not disturbed? If it looks like a disc, you know, if it looks symmetrical, even if it's slightly edge on, it's not disturbed and boom, you're done. But if it looks like there's stuff coming off of it, there's a tail, or if um, the arms are not symmetrical, then that's a sign of a, of a disturbed um, or asymmetrical galaxy mm -hmm. or the third option is can't see a galaxy or there's a problem with the image and i had one that was just it was a little bit of a fuzzy spot in a whole bunch of fuzzy on the entire image mm. and so you had to pick that one and and again these are crowdsourced they're going to be a bunch of different people that look mm -hmm. at each image and i think if there's a discrepancy that's what they'll go and look at too but mm -hmm. if most people get the same thing they'll count it as the, the, you know what it is yeah so the important features are the disc itself, a tail if there is one, and the spiral arms. Um, and the field guide, well, they reference the field guide. But um, so these are things, 
even if it's edge on, if you see tails coming out of it like this, then it means it's going through, um, you know, a gas bubble. It's, this has the gas stripping that you're looking for. Mm. And if you see the um, the arms kind of being um, pulled in one direction, that's, you know, it's moving this way is what that means. And the pressure is pulling those arms back. Okay. And important features asymmetry. If you notice, one arm is much shorter than the other. Yep. Um, also, there looks like a little bit of a tail here, but it's hard to tell what's actually going on. If it's going this way, yeah, I can see that because it's pulling this arm that way, and this one is being shortened because it's heading this way, and you can see the dust coming that way. So that's actually much clearer than most of the ones that I've seen. Yeah, me too. I suspect that the easy ones have already been gotten, but if you want a challenge, this is this is a good challenge. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. And um, they, they will have, mo you know, every image looked at by a, a number of yeah. people. Yeah. So watch out for mergers. Basically, if you see a merger, just mark it as a merger and then you go on because they're not looking for those. Now, my guess is that that goes on some other list and someone who's interested in mergers is going to be looking at those. Oh, very cool. You know, I just, just the way these guys work, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, so, um, unwinding spiral arms, we talked about that, and that's where that one's unwinding. Um, so a spin pinwheel shape has one or more arms that are un unwinding. Um, that's caused by the pressure, and that's what they're looking for. Also, um, if you see a tail, you can mark it from the center of the galaxy into the direction that the tail is going. Um, so that, that way, you know, it just helps them classify where, the, where it's going. And there we go. So the field guide, again, ram pressure stripping. That's just, it talks about ram pressure stripping, but it's pretty much the same thing that's in the about right there. Um, jellyfish galaxy, again, a little bit more in the way of images. Does that say why they call them jellyfish galaxies? Um, I, sus <laughs> I suspect that the ones that are easier to see what's going on, mm -hmm. especially the ones that are heading in flat against it and the tails are coming off the side of the disc instead of the edge. Yeah. Um, look like a jellyfish. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but all of these have some kind of asymmetry to them. And so these are all what they're calling jellyfish galaxies. Um, this looks okay. Yeah. Scale guide. Yeah. Um, they don't tell you a lot. Galaxy clusters. Yes, they talk about what a galaxy cluster is. They don't actually help with, um, you know, with with answering the questions. Um, tails are offset material. Like here, there's a fairly good tail, I think going on here, but, hmm. or it could be coming off here. Like I said, it's hard. These are a little bit difficult. This one's obvious. If you take a look, look at that. And that one looks almost like a comet. Hmm. I was gonna say something else, but I didn't. Um, and so here's arms unwinding. Look at these. Mm -hmm. huh. So these are all galaxies that are zooming through a cluster. Um, merging galaxies. Again, this is not the ones. Anytime you see galaxies close together, not the one. I think they have a thing for this, though, right? They can call them merging galaxies. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here we see this one. Obviously, edge on. Yeah. 
So can we see can we see enough detail to know? Oh, and up here in the top corner, that's a star that's nearby. Right. So you can ignore that. Well, one of the things I liked, you can hit that arrow for like play, it'll it'll go back and forth between them. Well, these you can do it manually, right? Yeah. And then far, you can do the Yeah, near and far. Yeah, and then you could do the other one. That's actually well, that's they're different sizes, so they're probably yeah. not Yeah, they're probably not near each other. That's No. But yeah, see the see the arrow over there? Did you try that? Yeah. Hit that and then just kind of goes between, between them. them. Yeah. And you can change the speed too. You don't yeah. have to go that fast. Yeah, I I just liked um popping between them like this. Oh, and I like to hit the play in. Yeah. Yeah. So I can't really see do these look symmetrical to you? I see. I don't see anything coming off. Yeah, there. I don't really see distinct yeah. arms of any sort, but it does seem like it might be disturbed. Yeah, I don't see anything that, to me, that mm -hmm. you know, I don't see like this side is longer than this side. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'm just gonna say undisturbed. That's cool. And oops, we didn't. Know. Didn't take, I think. Yeah, there, there you go. go. So you and get the next. next. Now, you can tell them why you think whatever you thought. Yeah. Um, which is different from a lot of these is that you can actually. Right. Um, you can actually say. Um, and so another one. Here's just a fuzzy blob. <laughs> now, if you take a look, this distance versus this distance. Mm. There is actually a bit of a pull this way. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say disturbed. And next. Again with the next, and I get a different set yep. to play with. Is it merging or not merging? Mm. Oh, let's look. Nope, nothing nearby. Nothing nearby, yeah. I'd uh, say not merging. Not merging. Next. Can you see spiral arms? Ah, no, we're up Not really. Right. Oh, nope, it's fuzzy. Does, does it have a distinct tail or displaced material? Mm. Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, just because if you take a look at this versus this. See Maybe. That? Yeah. <laughs> now that I want you to draw it. Yeah. <laughs> and now you... Um, Yes, I can see the direction of the tail. How would you tell it that, how would you say that there's a tail if you don't know the direction of the tail? That's, I don't know why they have this one because if there's a tail, you know the direction of it, but, mm. um, and, it, and it's, is it just the center or is that everywhere? It looks everywhere to me. Or the whole disc. Yeah, that's more that's like it, disc. I think. Yeah. Now you guys see what I mean about lots of steps. They're all fairly simple steps. So galaxy tail, go from there to there. Okay. Next. And it tallies it up and you don't, they only really want you to show you one of them. Yeah. Yeah. So and if there appear to be more, it's the kind of the main one. Yep. And so that's, that's it. Um, let's see, does that look symmetrical or does that look like there's a tail in that direction? I don't know. Look at the big picture. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, it's still hard to say. Yeah. I don't think it's merging with another galaxy. No, it's not. And I don't think, I can't really see that there's anything going on. Yeah. Wow. So I'm going to. So yeah, try these for yourself. It's, it's, I'd say it's pretty, uh, you can get your, you know, sink your teeth into it. It's kind of, kind of good enough for that. Yeah. It's not that hard. Yeah. Not a lot of training like some of them. Yeah. Yeah. So. Again, there's that star in front of. Yeah. And so you can ignore that because that's right. nowhere near that galaxy. Right. So. Yeah. you got some weird ones. I, I saw those, the ones I saw were pretty easy to figure out these are these look pretty hard these are the ones that i that i encountered myself so okay you know this type of thing 
Did you want to get into the, let's see, there's a couple more segments on this. Okay, let's go to the top. Yeah, talk, collect, and re uh, recents. Do you want to talk about any of that? The, these are the same as... Um, yeah, just like any Zooniverse. But if, you know, yeah. people are here for the first time. Yeah. They have a lot of... of... Um, of um, chat chat rooms for this um, and people have um, done up collections of them. Oh, there you go. You might see some interesting stuff there. Oh, yeah. yeah look at this, the asymmetrical uh, arms. This one? And, yeah. Yeah. This is more of the idea, but it, maybe they're not showing these because this project is nearing completion unless they add more yep. subjects to look at. So, yeah, you can go into the, what was that, talk or collect? That was collect, right? That was collect and then recents. Recent classifications. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I didn't look at these parts of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, this this is all fairly typical of, you know, of the site. But yeah, these are ones that you can take a look at and see see what they're talking about. This is actually a good example of ones that are and plus they're interesting galaxies that other people found yep so you can take a look at these and see um see some possibly interesting galaxies here yeah you can definitely see the the arms better in, in these pictures yeah i kind of like this one where yeah, it's a little bit crowded over there yeah it is um yeah, so that's the site. So a pretty typical Zooniverse project. I do think there's plenty to work with, and maybe they are getting kind of down to the, the last dregs a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but who knows? They may add more um, more subjects to, 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 to work on. They could be really interesting again. And these sky surveys, I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of them out there. Right. Um, but always interesting stuff. All right. Uh, if anybody has questions, please do leave us a um, a comment. And we're going to talk about this. So you can get your free list of annual meteor showers. Just visit meteor shower meteor shower chart dot com. Fill in the form. Press the button to get your chart today. Okay. Oh, yeah. It did. You're up. Yep. Um, some stellar events this week, January 13th through January 20th. Uh, January 13th, the first Globe at Night project of 2023 begins. Um, that's today. Yeah. Runs from today through um, January 22nd. In the, in the Northern Hemisphere, um, you look for Orion or Canis Major, and more on that later. In the Southern Hemisphere, you look for Orion. No. Um, they made an announcement on this on their site um, during some of the 2023 Globe at Night campaigns. There will be more than one choice for which constellation is optimal to use. This will depend on your location around the globe. To decide which one is best for you at your location for the dates listed below, check to see if the constellation is more than halfway above the horizon. If so, you can use that constellation for the campaign. If not, try another suggested constellation for the month. Oh. Yeah, so that's, I've never seen this before. Um, they do give you a couple options yeah. for this. And Cliff, um, we were talking at the beginning about how some shows have been disappearing. And we wanted to um, see if there was interest enough to get people to go ahead and send an email uh, with the words show pledge to PM Hoffman and Everyday Spacer. Say if you want to pledge some amount uh, per month, and then if you want to cover the fees for that, uh, and then we will, uh, it'll encourage us to keep going. We do love your comments as well. It's just, you know, we, <laughs> you spend time, you do all this stuff, and it's like, well, am I getting anywhere? And that'd yeah. be a really good way to, to help us know that, yeah, people are interested, and yeah. we can keep the show going. Yeah, and every time we, we start going, well, there's not a lot happening. We're, you know, yeah. but we're thinking of wrapping it up. Yeah. Something happens. Like I look at the um, 
the space symposium and get a bunch of guests from it who are all really interesting and we all want to talk to them. So, um, so then that's another two, three, four months worth of, yeah. of, of show content. So did you finish? I'm sorry. I kind of yeah. interrupted you, didn't I? Yeah. Did okay. You part? Did you part? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. That <laughs> that's what I So, um, for the sky sur survey, go out, look for a constellation, take a picture and match it to one of the images um, they offer and select the co cloud cover and then submit your report. Uh, oh, we did the show. This is when we did the show. Oh, and we actually did July. a show on, on that. All right, let me put um, that. July of I'll add this, 2021. 2021. All right, that was the show where we actually did a demonstration of Globe at Night to show you all the different aspects of that. Uh, and this might be a good time to, to, to review that again. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, January 14th, last quarter moon. January 18th, Pluto and the Sun are in conjunction. <laughs> like, who cares? <laughs> Go out, yeah, turn turn your telescope on that one. I dare you. Yeah, there's significance for different people. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you're going to see keep Pluto going. without a huge <laughs> telescope. And you're not going to be pointing a huge telescope near the sun anyway. Yeah. Um, January right filters you can. <laughs> yeah, but then you won't see Pluto. That's true. <laughs> um, January 20th, Friday night show, and we have another guest. Um, join us Fridays at 9 p.m. Pacific time on the Everyday Spacer Facebook page and the Everyday Spacer YouTube channel. Also, Mercury and the Moon are in conjunction. Those you'll actually see together. <laughs> yeah, you got clouds, Cliff. You don't have that problem at all. Oh, good. It's incredible how much new information is coming out about galaxies. Yeah, we've got we've so got many large telescopes at work day. Yep. 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 And some of them you can run. We did a show on that too. Yep. Uh, so let's see. You finished, right? Yep. All right. Some other events and activities. It's a little bit of a mess, but I'm going to talk about Regeneron uh, because they're closed now. They don't have. They haven't announced the 2023 competitions yet. They do need volunteers and judges, or you can sign up to receive updates. Oh, we got a we got a thing for that. You want to run that? They have four competitions in general. One is a science talent search. I would start watching for the next round uh, in June because la the last one they announced in June of 2022, the International Science and Engineering Fair, ISEF for short. Um, it says uh, Regeneron ISEF. 2023, the world's largest pre-college STEM competition will take place from May 13th through 19th in Dallas, Texas. That's an actual event, a live and in-person uh, place you go. Broadcam, Broadcom, Broadcom Masters, uh, we think is opening in February, and we'll, we'll keep tracking this stuff so you'll know. The affiliated, affiliated Fair Network has nearly 400 affiliated fairs around the globe. The Affiliated Fair Network plays a critical role in facilitating the pursuit of STEM in young scientists, engineers, and inventors. And the, the it's basically a science fair. And that is the place where the young people start and then they can go on to win these other prizes. Uh, I did find something else that was kind of interesting too. Uh, research at home when, when everything closed down they responded to that. Uh, do I have, I don't think I have the link up there, but I could put it in the chat, right? Society for Science, yes. It's this one. Uh, oh, Research no. at Home. Yeah. Let me put that in the chat. Okay, oh, yeah. we got another comment too, so we'll look at that shortly. All right, there's a live clickable link. Cliff says Pluto Monster Scope won't work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're close. Yeah. All right, so that's societyforscience.org. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is kind of cool. And I think we're going to do a whole show about this because I did some digging and uh, found a website where you actually look at it and put in, like, your state or whatever, and you could find out when science fairs are going to be happening. And uh, let's see, that was, uh, there were... USA and 70 other countries. Let's see. I'm going to read this part. Most science fairs in the U.S. and U.S. territories are held from January through March. Fairs outside of the U.S. may take place at other times of the year. Students who participate in these fairs must observe 
the International Rules for Pre-College Science Research. And uh, let's see. Oh, we'll, we'll do that later. The deadlines, deadlines may be approaching. I looked at Ohio, so that was there for the last 10 weeks. There are five, all have deadlines in February for science fairs in March. And uh, maybe some of them could use help, judges and stuff. So there's a way for people who aren't students to participate. Mm -hmm. uh, Space Prize has a speaker series, the YouTube link. Copy paste that into the... And they're not creating new ones right now, but they do have a number of them archived from before. The fifth round of Nominate, a student with perseverance, closed on January the 3rd. The awards will be announced on January the 24th. We have a banner for that. Uh, the sixth opportunity is going to open on January 24th as well. And uh, you may recall this was for sixth through eighth grade students in the United States. These are public, private, and homeschools. Uh, homeschool children who are eligible. There are some pretty cool awards for this one too. Oh, hey Cliff, he's got uh, got myself. Oh yes, I saw your picture. <laughs> That's why you got clouds. I'm so sorry. Quit doing that. <laughs> Quit buying stuff. So uh, Mark Mark Wagner was our guest a, a few weeks ago, and he mentioned the education symposium um, will be coming again in April or May. And that was the one that Jeff went to mm -hmm. uh, on November 12th. Yep. Now we were looking, we we're still looking for that because it still says November the 12th. But when we did some digging, we found this thing, the Space Foundation. Now their symposium is going to be April 17th through 20th at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So go ahead and check out that link there. So if you or someone you know has done something interesting involving space exploration, science, or astronomy, we'd love to share our live. Join us again next Friday, January 20th, for our guest, Brooke Rose Edwards. She's an I-24 member, um, hence the nickname. Um, call sign. Call sign. Nickname, whatever. It's call sign. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, January 27th. Um, Don Jenkins returns for part two of, of her talk. We, we didn't get to everything that she's been involved in so much stuff that uh, that we're going to be talking about more stuff that she's been involved with. And this will be cool because we'll do it this way where I'm here and she'll be there and she'll pour it in mm -hmm. like all of our other guests. So uh, let's do a quick shout out. We're really glad you're here. Thanks so much. Speaking of Dawn, she's here today. Lord of the Equator, Scott and Jamie and Cliff. And Alan. Alan, Dan, thanks so much. Dan's just down the street here. Yeah, Tex. Tex was here, yeah. We are so grateful that you are participating and asking questions and show, showing up every week, week after week, and staying for the whole show. It's just, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, oh, let's see. Nope, I read that one. Yeah, about the, about the camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so sorry, Cliff. All right, you got anything else? Nope. You got anything else? Nope. All right. See ya. Have a great week, folks. We'll yep. see you next week yep. with our next guest, Rose.